setting up QPath. If you go to settings in the upper right hand corner, select config, go over to the left hand side of your screen, select connectivity, and under connectivity, select TCP IP. Here we'll set up the IP address of the destination device we're sending to. You go, you're going to go over the right hand side of your screen under server config. Click on add. You'll get a new server config window. You can click on your server name window. Backspace through this. And we're just going to name this QPath. This is just a noun name. So it is irrelevant to the communications of the system to QPath. This is something your users are going to see. So you would most likely want to name it something your users are familiar with. Once you've configured the server name, you can click on the IP address field. And then you can go ahead and enter your IP address. In this case, we're using 192. Dot 168. Dot 1. Dot 139. And you can click on check. And that check is just verifying you've got good TCP IP communications between the back of your ultrasound machine and the back of the computer or server where your QPath software resides. Once you're completed, go ahead and select OK. Then we can now proceed to the data flow field. Over to the left hand side under connectivity, select data flow. You're going to see a list of your devices that either receive information from an outside source or send to a destination. We'll go ahead and select DICOM image storage one. And since it's on in blue, that means once we finish with this configuration, when we finish an exam, it will automatically send to the DICOM destination device. And in this case, we're going to configure that to send a QPath. So ultimately, it will send a QPath. We'll go ahead and change our name. Again, just like the name under TCP IP. This is not relevant to the communications. It's just a noun name. So we will just call it QPath. And now we'll enter the AE title. And for the AE title field, you want to make sure this is specific to the destination device you're sending to. It must match exactly. If it doesn't, it will fail in the communications attempt and fail in sending images. And we're going to go ahead and change the port. And the port number as well must match the destination device you're sending to. Otherwise, it will fail when you try to send images. Now that we've made all the changes to the QPath configuration, we can go ahead and select check. And you'll get an information check status window. And under there, you'll get a server check. And it's doing three checks from the back of the ultrasound machine to the back of the computer you're sending to. This ensures you've got good TCP IP communications between the ultrasound machine and that destination device. You have also have a DICOM ping on here. It, again, it's doing three checks, but it's doing it from the software level of the ultrasound machine to the software level of the device where the QPath software is in, uh, installed and it ensures you have good communications from software level to software level. 
go ahead and select on OK. After you've completed that, you can select Apply. You will now get an important change. Changes will apply after restart only. You can select Close. And then once you restart your system, it's now configured to automatically send to QPath once you end your exam. Please note when configuring your QPath packs, when you select direct store, that this will save the images directly to the local archive and send to the <coughs> QPath as soon as you press the store button, not at the end of the exam as you typically would expect.